Welcome, dedicated followers of the channel. It's your, well, it's your course, of course I'm yours. Phil Beckwith, the professional painter and decorator. And I'm coming back with another, and I said I would do, lining a wall. Now the last video I did on lining a wall, stripping, I did stripping a wall, and the videos are there. Stripping a wall, lining a wall, was well received. I'm gonna tell you it was well received. But there are a lot of people, I won't say having a go at me, but do you know how I keep telling you little knowledge is a dangerous thing? People didn't like the fact that I hung the lining paper, albeit wall rock vertically. If you did sit through that 15 to 20 minutes worth of video, you know why I hung it vertically. But I'm coming back and I'm gonna keep, keep some people happy at least. I'm just gonna show you doing this sort of wall. It's only a feature wall. I'm using wall rock again and I'm gonna cross line it. Now, if you're watching this because you've not watched the other videos and you've seen the thumbnail, all I'm gonna say is, you know what? It doesn't matter. If you know what you're doing with wallpapering, it doesn't matter whether you hang these lining papers horizontally or vertically. And I don't even wanna hear people saying you hang it horizontally because of the gravity of the pull of the paper. And it, oh, you know that, people say that about leaving a gap leaving a gap on lining paper. It's because of the expansion when you put, do you know what? I don't know who told you that, but they, they were pulling your leg because there's no expansion on lining paper once that lining paper's on the wall and it's dried. You're not putting enough paste on that surface to soak into that lining paper, whether it be a pulp, a basic, I'll say basic, 800, 1000, 1200, 1400, 1600, 2,000, two, you know, thickness of lining papers. You're not putting enough paste on that lining paper to make it expand and swell. Because if you read the instructions on the back of lining papers, you'll know that there is a soak time. And when you paste the lining paper, even as, oh, well, I, we don't do 600s and was it 480? We used to use at college, it was like tissue paper. But we, minimum is an 800. That is a good six minute soak before you put it on the wall. So don't be fearing that it's gonna expand on the wall if you put your wallpaper over it. We're moving on from that. Right, I'm using wall rock again because I've got a nice paper to go on, so I'm giving it a good sound base. I'm not showing you stripping it because I've done it. Prep of the wall was pretty good. I've just had a little bit of, a little bit of area that I've just fine surface filled early this morning and I've just touched in, spot primed with a bit of paste, those dry areas. The rest of the wall doesn't need sizing because I've done the, finger and tongue, testing it on there. There is still paste on that surface from when I've stripped it and it's not a porous surface. It's been a vinyl mat or whatever the customers use because this wasn't done professionally before. It is still a surface that's not gonna soak in the paste. Plus I'm using wall rock, so I'm gonna apply it straight to the wall. Now, horizontal hanging or lining, should we call it horizontal lining? Once you know what you're doing, once you're a skilled, I'm gonna say skilled paper hanger, you know how to do things. But if you're watching this because you're not used to um, paper hanging before, or you're not so much of the skilled decorator um, that knows a lot about wallpapering, I would hang that straight to the ceiling, like that, all the way across. And if it was starting to run out, I would feel it was running out. And if I had to adjust it, I would adjust it accordingly. The other way of doing this is, if you've got a laser liner, you can get a line struck going across with a laser liner. Offer that up to the ceiling. I'll just move my camera up like that so we can see. You'd offer it up to the ceiling like that. Mark it down the ceiling to see what it's like all the way across. And then you would probably lift it up slightly by half an inch. So if there is any running out of the ceiling, that piece there you can see is above that, it's a good dark color. I would just trim off. But you will get used to this with time to know what you need to do and it's the experience. So I'm not gonna make a big thing out of this. Once I start hanging the paper across, I will be fast forwarding it and then we will just have a bit of a recap at the end. So this, we shouldn't be 20 minutes on this, hopefully. But what I'm gonna do is just gonna show you, I'm just gonna get my pencil. I've got my usual tools, hanging brush. I've got my squeegee spatula. I've got, uh, I've not got my shears on me because I'm gonna use a, a blade and a straight edge. 
Well, I'm just going to show you what I mean. So if you can bear with me, I'm using 55 centimetres. I'm using 55 centimetres wall rock. And I've already worked it out that there'll be three drops. If you can just see it off camera or on camera, there's a little fireplace, feature fireplace. So offering it up, I want to know that one length will go there, one length will go there, and the other one just sits nicely, literally, literally just sits nicely at the top of that fireplace. If there is a slight gap, I'm not too worried because I will be putting a bead of cork around that anyway when it's all dry. So I know that three drops will do me um, the width horizontally, not, we're not dropping it. So three horizontal drops will get me to the fireplace and then either side of the fireplace, just down to the bottom, will be one more drop and I've got a feeling there'll be a slither. Now this is one of the reasons why I don't always horizontal cross line because sometimes the walls are a little bit bigger and I'm on my own. It's not easy. I've got a, a step up and I've got a pair of steps just there. Sometimes it is easier to hang them vertically. Now, if you're hanging vertically, like I explained in the last video, if you're hanging vertically, make sure you hang from the opposite side or stagger it that these ends, joints, won't be corresponding with your finished wallpaper. Now, if you're going to be painting over it, it doesn't matter. But if it's finished wallpaper, you can start from this end all the way across. But when, well, that's, if you're hanging your lining paper and you start this end, let's get this right, start from this end. When you come to your finish wallpaper, start from that end. The widths of lining paper and actual wallpapers are around about 21, 22 inches. They're slightly different. If you go to a European American standard finish wallpaper, it might be 27. You, probably, you might come across these more often if depending on where you're buying your wallpapers from. But this, won't be corresponding with any joints of the finished paper if I hung vertically because I know where I'll be starting, I know where I'll be finishing, I know how to hang the paper. But for this, let's crack on, let's get this on horizontally. Place of choice today again is the wicks and the roller sleeve is a rotor gold long pile and I have to say that is beautiful for applying, well, paste straight out the tub. It's a lovely length, it gets plenty on. Now I'm hanging from that side all the way across and I will be hanging to the actual ceiling edge. So if it is wobbling about, I will adjust it accordingly. So let's see how we go. Got my pencil, got my um, bits and pieces in my pocket that I need. Working off the roll, and as it comes off, that back end, like the back, will go straight on. You need arms like olive oil, and those that are old enough to know who olive oil is, comments below. Now, that was not tricky because I could have moved my steps, it wasn't that big a wall. The ceiling isn't bad, there was just a little bit just there, you saw me trim a little bit up there, off, because it had just crept up onto the ceiling, that's because of the plastering. But on the whole, the angles aren't bad there and across the top it's actually hung to it so that was quite easy the awkwardness is actually holding with one hand depending on your size your hands if you've got ladies hands and that's probably the wrong wokeism wokeism if you've got small hands let's just say if you've got small hands if you've got oh, i don't know jeremy what's his name beadle hands small hands you're not going to hold a big 
roll of wallpaper and these are doubles. If you've got smaller singles, you'll be all right. Now, sometimes two-handed job, i.e. not two hands, but you know, if this is a two-person, two-man, two-woman job, it might be a bit easier on bigger expanses. But that, I've managed it. But I would say hanging top to bottom would be easier if you're on your own on a bigger area. So um, let me crack on and I'll show you what it's like when it's done because we're keeping this under 20 minutes. There we have it, everybody. I've done that wall, and I'm oh, coming because I can't see myself on the screen. That's probably taken me no more than three quarters of an hour to do that wall, and that is even including those little uh, daft little cuts because we've hung horizontally. There was a strip at the bottom just there, which is probably about, I'd probably say about an inch and a half. Now, I freehand cutted, is that a word? just over two inches off the good edges on a width. So then that just went into place and it was just the usual, get it in and it was on top of the skirting. So straight edge, trim it and it's nicely gone in. That's fine. Uh, didn't take the sockets off this time. I just literally went around them, cut them neat again with the straight edge and the sharp blade. That's all nicely done. When I come to do the finished paper, what I'll do with these is just loosen them off, dust them out before the paper goes on, and then they'll just be nipped up uh, with the paper just at the back of it. If in doubt, always turn your electrics off. Um, seasoned, seasoned pros like myself will take the chance. Sorry. Um, so all good, really happy with that. I don't want to, I don't want to teach my grandmother how to suck eggs and have a go at everybody all the time, but you know when people say, oh, I don't need to line, I don't need to line it, so it's, yeah. Right, a prime example, sorry to get onto people, prime example, if we can see it, this wall was dark. Move you around, this room was dark. This room, yeah, the room was dark. This wall was dark, and there were some areas where that paint had come off, and it had left, I don't, can we see it? There's certain areas here that are showing the filler literally through that lining paper. And you'll go, and, and. What I'm gonna to say to you is, there's some non-woven papers and also ordinary traditional papers paste the back in that are very like this, that they go translucent or transparent, should I say. You know which one I mean. That when they dry on the wall, they still show what was at the back. And this is a prime example, and if you can see it, yeah, you can. Can you see how these patches are here? There, there, bits there. If this was a finished paper with a light background, that would dry and you would see that through it. That's why you line. That's one of the reasons why you line. And that's why I'm lining here today, because it also gives you a sound surface to work on, which it is now. It evens up the colour, which it is now. It's also nice to work on. It gives thermic values. I know that it's only a fraction, but it actually makes it a little bit warmer because you've made the room smaller. But there are reasons why you line, and a lot of instructions on the back of papers that you're hanging will always recommend lining. Do you want to take that risk for the sake of, let's call it an hour's worth of labour and a 20 quid roller wall rock? Now, just last, before we conclude, I'll move you back around here so I'm not just looking like an angel. Well, I am an angel, but you know what I mean. Just a bit better. Right, why wall rock? The fibers in it. If I try and pull that apart, you cannot pull that apart. So if there is slight movement in your walls with cracks, I'm struggling to pull that apart. I can rip it, but I can't pull it apart. 
much. No, I can't pull it apart. If you've got bad substance, it will probably crack open. But those that don't know, if you can see these, right, can we focus? Can we focus? Yeah. Can you see the fine fibers in there? They're the bits. As I say, I can rip it, but I can't. I can rip it, but I can't pull it apart unless I get it on the edge. So that's why we use fiber liner. And I'm going to ask the question before we come up with the videos at the side, because back we're now at 20 minutes. Videos at the side. Those that remember, Anaglypta made this sort of paper, fiber lining. What did they used to call it? What did they used to call it? Now I know Anaglypta and Warrock have all merged. They're all together now. But when Anaglypta did their version of War Rock, what did it used to be called? That's your thought for the today. Videos at the side. Thanks for listening to me. Horizontal lining. Yes, I can do it. Is there anything I can't do? Dave, yeah, I'm being big-headed. I'm talking to you, Dave. Is there anything I can't do?